And then, before you exchange your vows, uh, I shall give one of my most acclaimed addresses, uh, in which I ruminate on how the word conjugal derives from the Latin yoked together. You most certainly will not. What an impertinence. Oh, for heaven's sake, why are we bothering with all this fuss and nonsense? And it's unseemly at our age. Do we really need hymns and a church full of gawping people? Perhaps we should just elope. Although that didn't work out terribly well for you, did it, dear boy? Thank you, Mr. Price. I hardly need to be reminded about my recent disgrace. I'm all too aware that once you are married, I'll be left without a place to live, or even a penny to my name. As ye sow, Sir Edward, so shall ye reap. She will not eat, she will not sleep. It is like having a phantom in the house. I shall never fall in love. It seems a beastly business. It is, Leo. Avoid it if you can. What do I say to Augusta? How do I reassure her? I can offer you nothing. Fear at that age, I was more often the cause of such suffering than the victim. Ah, oh, but now, of course, those days are long behind you. They may yet be. Strange as it sounds, I've lately found my thoughts turning to marriage. Well, she must be a remarkable woman to have tamed your wayward heart. She is astounding. I'm glad for you, Sam. I am. I'm increasingly of the belief that we are not meant to walk this life alone. But if recent events have proved anything, it's that Leo and Augusta are in need of a mother. I thought you'd abandon hope of Miss Hayward. I'm not thinking of her. Was that not a most peculiar dinner last night? Yes. Hmm. I suspect Mrs Parker took ill purely to spite you. Mm. No, before that. I'm afraid I found your so-called mother-in-law to be rather disconcerting, Harry. Did you not find her manner suspicious? Count yourself lucky Mr Colburn's parents are dead, Lydia, and immune from judgment. Still, let us not dwell on such doleful matters when we have so much to celebrate. The wedding of the season, Harry. So you keep reminding me. And Lydia, saved from the ignominy of spinsterhood, in the very nick of time. If you'll excuse me. I have arranged to go riding today. Well, we need hardly ask with whom. You're absolutely right, of course, my dear. You always have been. I should have ignored Mr. Price and listened to you from the very start. Now I can see it all so clearly. But I will give everything up, all of it. If only God would spare you. 